Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, BZ. It's excellent to see you again. We've got races, I guess, all over the continent to talk about. Oh, absolutely. Big day in Canada on Sunday. Uh, on Saturday, we got a big one from Saratoga, headed by Nest. Now, I thought Nest might try the Travers, but uh, odds on in the Alabama, I guess it's not that. Before we jump into the Alabama Queens Plate, Matt, let's talk about the race where Nest is not going. That's the Travers, and it's only a little over a week away now. And it's looking like an interesting field. You, you have probably the Derby winner in there. And the Preakness winner in there, and I don't think either one will be respected at the windows. Yeah, it, it's quite a field, Brian. You know, I, I think it stacks up as the, you know, if you want to give the Derby always the, you know, the best field for a three-year-old race of the year. It's certainly the most important, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, this uh, Travers field, which is shaping up to be maybe 10, 11 horses, is... Uh, is pretty darn stacked. Yeah, it's a nice Travers. It might be the best Travers in a few years, Matt. Epicenter looks like the favorite off his nice Jim Dandy win. You know, a lot has been made about kind of unlucky when he was second in the Derby and the Preakness, but that Jim Dandy win shows he's uh, not taking a step back, maybe taking a step forward for trainer Steve Asmussen. Look good over the track. Zandon returning in that Jim Dandy, his first race since the Derby ran a good race. I think he has to be respected. Maybe the maybe the dark horse of the field, Matt, is Charge It, who uh, won his last race. It's been a while since we saw that Dwyer, the one-mile Dwyer at Belmont Park. But uh, I think he won by 86 lengths, Matt. Did I get that uh, margin right? I, I think it was darn close to that, Brian. Uh, yeah, uh, tw I don't know what it was, 20-some uh, lengths. Uh, yeah, and, and a little bit forgotten already, but quite a performance. You know, you, you put Charge It in there, you put Artorius in there, another young horse that ran a really good race. Uh, it, it adds to the mix, a couple of new up-and-comers. You've got, like you said, the Derby winner and Rich Strike, who's up at Saratoga already, uh, arrived a few days ago uh, and and is uh, is looking good. Early voting, uh, Cyberknife, who just keeps getting better and better after that Haskell win. Um, yeah, quite a group. Yeah, it's a nice field. Uh, I, I've heard people start to compare Artorias, uh, of course, trained by Chad Brown, just like uh, the Preakness winner, early voting, and Zandon. But I've uh, heard a few people uh, say Art Artorias is the next arrogate. I don't know if I'm buying that, but uh, that lately race, Chad Brown, should get a lot of play. Uh, Epicenter's the one to beat, but we're going to talk much more about the Travers, of course, next week. Matt and I are looking forward to it. Not only the Travers, but also that great card that they have on Travers Day. That's the 27th, a week from Saturday at Saratoga. But in the here and the now, Matt, let's throw up this Alabama field on the graphics here. A field of seven. I, I was worried we were going to see another short field, but we got seven. I guess that's not a big field, but at least it's not a four or five horse field, as we've seen so often at Saratoga this summer. Uh, you got everybody that you'd probably want in here, Matt. Uh, the uh, top two from the Coaching Club American Oaks, which was four weeks ago at Saratoga, that grade one race. Nest and Secret Oath, they're the two favorites again, but they weren't really all that close at the wire, were they? No, they weren't. And it's the same top two from uh, Kentucky Oaks also uh, uh, in this rubber match, third time that Nest and Secret Oath are meeting. But no, that was, you know, that was a tour de force performance by Nest in the coaching club American Oaks coming on the heels of, of what was at that point the best performance of her career when she finished second in the Belmont stakes behind Mo Donegal, a second where she was, you know, gaining ground on uh, the winner of that race. She seems to be getting better and better and better for Todd Pletcher. Yeah, she is a regally bred. There's no doubt about that. A regally bred daughter of Curlin. And uh, she showed a lot of potential uh, winning the Demoiselle at, uh, at two, but she's taking it to a new level this year. She's romped in the Sun Coast at Tampa Bay Downs. The grade one Ashland was uh, turned into a runaway 
Uh, she had a little traffic, went second behind Secret Oath in the Kentucky Oaks. As you say, she ran a big Belmont, went second to Mo Donegal, who uh, could be the best three-year-old male of the year, although he's on the shelf now. And that's, I, I think she would have had a shot in the Travers. Uh, I like the fact that she's stretching out for this Alabama. I think she really likes the distance, a mile and a quarter of the Alabama should be right up her alley. You called it a rubber match, and it cer certainly is because uh, Kentucky Oaks, uh, Secret Oath was first, Nest was second, Coaching Club American Oaks, Nest was first, Secret Oath was second. But somehow, Matt, it just doesn't feel quite like a rubber match to me in that Nest seems to be going forward. I did not think Secret Oath ran a very good race. Yeah, she was second in the Coaching Club Oaks, but it was more than 12 lengths behind Nest. And she didn't change leads. I don't know if she liked the track. She's had a tough campaign. I'm worried a little bit that uh, the campaign that she's been on since uh, since late last summer or early fall last year uh, might be getting to her a little bit. We'll see on Saturday if she can bounce back a little bit. But in no shape or form does that Kentucky or, or this sorry the Coaching Club American Oaks result or, or looking at that race make you think that the Alabama, it's a good opportunity for Secret Oath to bounce back, turn the tables and take a 2-1 lead in their rivalry. Certainly Nest is the one to beat. Secret Oath, uh, we'll see if she can run a better race than she did in the Coaching Club American Oaks. I certainly hope so. She's the second choice, the daughter of Arrogate. Uh, clear third choice on the morning line. The only other horse that I think will get serious play in here, Matt, is Gerrymander. And Gerrymander is an interesting uh, daughter of Into Mischief, and that that guy again, that guy again, Matt, Chad Brown, is the trainer. Gerrymander steps in. Uh, Nest has been racing quite a bit, had the Belmont. Secret Oath's been racing a lot and had two races against males. But Gerrymander comes in as a relatively fresh filly for Saturday's grade one, Alabama. Yeah, which is often the case with Ch Chad Brown's runners. They usually come into races relatively fresh, fresher, maybe a little less rate race uh, than others. Uh, but last time out, uh, Jerry Mander won the Mother Goose uh, impressively. Um, you know, before that, uh, uh, didn't look as good. We're finishing sixth in the eighth bells at Churchill Downs. But uh, earlier on in the career, she was a winner of the Tempted in which uh, she defeated Nest. Yeah, the, the, the second and third choice. Now, Nest is a heavy, heavy favorite in here, but the second and third choice are both uh, uh, graded stakes winners, multiple stakes winners, and they've both defeated Nest before. So that adds maybe a little bit of interest here to this uh, Alabama field. Yeah, gerrymander's interesting. She, As you said, she was a good two-year-old. She ran second twice and uh, first twice in four races. She broke her maiden at Saratoga in her only start at Saratoga, and she beat a good filly in in breaking that maiden at Saratoga last summer. So she should have no trouble at the track, although Chad Brown horses never seem to have any trouble at Saratoga. Uh, as you say, uh, two starts this year and the eight bells, you know, they brought her back in a very tough sprint and she probably didn't have the best trip in there. That That's a kind of a, a tightener. They uh, Trainers used to uh, bring their good horses back in tighteners, and, and she got one in there. I'm not worried about that result at all. But I thought the Mother Goose was very good. Shahama, who was uh, second beaten clearly by three lengths to Jerry Mander in the nine furlong, uh, Mother Goose came back and won nicely at the Monmouth Oaks. Uh, Jerry Mander, the one knock on her I really have in this race is she's never been two turns before. Now she gets 10 furlongs and she gets nest. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, you know, you see a win like in the Mother Goose that was a mile and a sixteenth, and and look at her peepees, and you do have to remind yourself, uh, even even with that success and that distance, she has not gone two turns yet, and uh, this is a tough field in which to do that. Tough field in which to do that, but uh, right now, w w everything I said about Secret Oath and as far as her tough campaign and not running a good race at Saratoga last time. Even though she got second, I, I would think Jerry Mander could be the biggest threat in the race to Nest. I mean, let's face it, Nest is is going to be tough in here. Of the others, uh, Goddess of Fire, interestingly, won first asking. She was a debut winner last year, and since then, she's 0 for 7. All of them came in stakes races. She's the other Todd Pletcher in here. All that came, came in stakes races, Matt, and she's been second four times in those stakes. 
Yeah, second in some really good races, second in some graded uh, stakes races, the Gulf Stream Park Oaks, the Rachel Alexandra, um, most recently was second in a listed stake at Saratoga. So, you know, she's a nice, nice horse uh, running well, but again, finds herself in a pretty tough spot. Tough spot, especially if you look at her one really good race as far as competition or competition like she'll see on Saturday in the Alabama was, the, of course, the Kentucky Oaks, and she was not close that afternoon. Nostalgic hasn't really been close either. A daughter of Medaglia Doro trained by Bill Mott, Matt, she looked like she might be developing into a nice filly, especially once she won the Gazelle back in April and looked good doing it for a second straight win. But then again, she came up against Secret Oath and Nest and then Nest and Secret Oath the last two times and really didn't uh, didn't show that she was going to be competitive, at least with Nest. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, you know, in the Kentucky Oaks against both of them, she was uh, 10th. And then in uh, Coaching Club American Oaks, she was third. And of course, of course, it was a very distant third, a pretty non-competitive third in terms of uh, in terms of the winner, ne uh, Nest. Yeah, I always uh, I always like those Medagliadoro fillies. And of course, Belmont is one of the greatest trainers in American racing. I, I wonder if she can improve, but it seems like too much that she'll need to improve here. Two other horses we probably are not familiar with going into the Alabama. Uh, of the two, I think Scratch Cat is the interesting one. Phil Bauer trained Philly. She's never been in a stakes race before, uh, but she looks like she will get 10 furlongs. And her last one uh, was a, a rallying allowance win at Churchill Downs. Scratch Cat would be one of those horses that, especially at 10 furlongs, I, I kind of want to use underneath you know, maybe not second, but very well she could rally up for third or fourth in this Alabama. And if nobody else runs, maybe she's the one that brings up to nest. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, looks like uh, a horse that uh, has a nice race to build on in that allowance at uh, Churchill. Yeah, yeah, she beat some decent fillies that day. She's keen, keen ice. Uh, we all know what keen ice did at 10 furlongs at Saratoga. Maybe that's why Rusty Arnold is jumping from a maiden win at Saratoga uh, in her fifth try in maiden company to the Alabama. But uh, you got to think too much too soon with that one. Yeah, maybe it's just the Calumet Farms uh, factor. We're, we're used to seeing them take shots with horses that look pretty unlikely in very big races. So here we are again. Here we are again, and she's facing Nest, Matt, and Nest is after her third grade one win of the year. The first two were so easy in the Ashland and the Coaching Club American Oaks. Nest would become, if she wins Saturday's Alabama, the first horse in American racing in 2022 to win three grade one races. Shift gears, we're going to go from American racing to Canadian racing, Matt, and there's been years, especially in the last eight, ten years, where I fought the Queen's Plate was a Canadian bred race, and it really didn't offer any serious horses on a North American landscape, but basically an American landscape. There have been some, certainly some good ones over the year that have won the Queen's Plate. Uh, Dance Smartly comes to mind. With Approval was another one of my favorites over the years that could come down to America and win anything in American racing. We haven't really seen that in Canadian racing lately. But I, I do feel like this is a bit of an upturn and a bit of an upswing for Canadian breads this year with their three-year-olds. Messier, Ontario bread, is not here, nor is Interstate Daydreams, a nice, uh, nice American filly who's bred in Ontario as well. But still, I think we ended up with a pretty good Queen's Plate, and there's a couple of exciting horses in this 11-horse field. Yeah, 11-horse field, and of course, the first leg of the Canadian triple crown for a uh, Canadian bred three-year-old. It's a, it's an interesting triple crown, of course. Same distances in the same order as the American triple crown. But after that, it, it's rather different uh, with the races going on three different surfaces, starting out in the Queen's Plate at Woodbine on their artificial and then moving to the dirt at Fort Erie and then finally on to the turf. Uh, uh, back at Woodbine. So it, 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 to me, it's an even tougher triple crown to try and complete than, than the American one. 
And there have been less Canadian Triple Crowns in the history than uh, contri Triple Crown winners in Canada than there have been American Triple Crown winners, Matt. So that probably speaks to it. Yeah, it's kind of a wacky Triple Crown with uh, with three different surfaces, three different di distances like American racing, but three different surfaces. We start with the biggest one, the Queen's Plate. It's the Kentucky Derby of Canadian racing. Uh, and uh, there's two exciting horses that I mentioned but then there's a pretty strong uh, backup field in here. I, I think the favorite uh, will certainly be the Philly, Matt. Uh, Mora Rose, I guess I guess it's just Mora. Uh, she is uh, coming off a gigantic win in the Woodbine Oaks. She debuted last year in stakes racing. She's only had four. She narrowly missed against Open Company for her only loss. That came last year. Uh, she started this year with a stakes win, but then in the Woodbine Oaks, she showed herself off as a potential superstar with a 10-length win, Matt, on Woodbine Oaks Day. Yeah, and, and Phillies have done well in this race in the past. I think it was just a few years ago. Um, Mark Cassie won the Queen's Plate with uh, Wonder Godot uh, back, was it? I don't know, like 2018, 2019, something like that. So uh, Phillies have fared uh, fared pretty well uh, in the Queen's Plate. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and Moira looks like per perhaps the uh, strongest Philly that's entered in the Queen's Plate in some years with that resume. She's the favorite, Matt, and um, uh, she could be tough to beat in here, but I'm going to try to beat the favorite. Of course, the horse that I'm looking at is not exactly full of odds either. I've just loved what Ron Durer has done in his three races this year. He really didn't show much in two races, two maiden races last year, but Ron Durer has been absolutely terrific. Uh, the first couple came in sprints, seven furlong sprints, where he broke his maiden by 10 lengths, and then he just missed getting up in a good three-year-old stake at Woodbine before stretching out last time to a mile and a 16th. So he'll have to stretch out more here for this mile and a quarter. They all will. Yeah. Uh, the Philly coming off a uh, nine for a long win in the Woodbine Oaks. But Ron Deere comes off a mile and 16th win in the Marine where he looked really, really good. This is a son of Oxbow who was able to stay a little closer to the lead, Matt, last time. And then he just rolled by a good field in the open Marine stakes. Yeah, certainly does look like another good one coming off a strong performance. Uh, uh, we got we've got a field of eleven going into this with uh, uh, at, at least half of the field having prepped the last time in the uh, in the in the plate trial the the main prep race for the Queen's Plate. Yeah, the number ten Sir for sure was a uh, upset winner, uh, despite being from the Cassie Bar. And Mark Cassie usually has some uh, a, a lot to say, especially in these three year old stakes, two year old stakes as well. He's He's big up there in Canada, and he's got two in here. They're both interesting, Sir for sure, and Hall of Dreams. Uh, uh, they ran one, two in the play trial, which was a bit of a surprise, especially Sir for sure. Yeah, uh, uh, and, and uh, Cassie's run the Queen's play twice, so he's going for his third win in here. Yeah, it's uh, Sir for sure, which uh, I guess isn't that easy to easy to say. Um, uh, one that. Uh, won that plate trial having shipped down to uh gulfstream park to uh get a maiden victory in uh in his third try also on an artificial surface down there uh, um and was another one that started out his career in a stakes race yeah i'm actually yeah yeah uh, cassie must have always liked her for sure so that 20 20 to won odds in the uh, Queen's Plate trial. Must have some sort of vindication for him. The horse that ran second that day, Hall of Dreams, is another Cassie, and I, I kind of am more interested than her, him. He doesn't have a, uh, a lot of speed. Patrick Husband's uh, one of the best Canadian riders for the last 10, 20 years, Matt, will be on Hall of Dreams. He comes running. He looks like a horse who's bred for 10 furlongs. Very interesting. Who else was in that uh, play trial? The Minster was the disappointment. Uh, if you could draw a line, in fact, through the plate trial for the Minkster, he's perfect, uh, including a win, a narrow win, where he held off Rondor at seven furlongs. But the Minkster was probably the best two-year-old in Canada last year, and the plate trial was his first defeat. 
Yeah, and, and he's showed versatility already. He's got a win. He broke his maiden on the turf, and then he won uh, a stakes race uh, on the tapita at Woodbine. Um, yeah, but that sixth-place finish uh, in the play trial was a little bit of, head scr- of a head-scratcher, but I guess it's going to help you get uh, uh, some better odds on that horse than you certainly would have gotten uh uh, just going on the races before the plate trial. Absolutely. And as a son of English Channel, uh, I, I would think 10 furlongs is, uh, it, it could be up his alley. Uh, he's a horse certainly with tactical speed. There is there is speed in here. Ironstone certainly has speed. And the outside horse, uh, we would expect causing mayhem to be uh, involved early, Matt. He went up there for the plate trial, but it was only his third race. He just missed at Gulfstream Park on the turf in his debut performance. And they had a nice maiden win at Belmont Park, showed good speed in the play trial and uh, hung around to be third. Certainly you think that uh, Cause and Mayhem could move forward off that effort, his first effort over the uh, Woodbine synthetic surface. Yeah, and we're talking about uh, he's trained by Todd Pletcher. So, you know, if if, uh, uh, Pletcher sent him up for the... uh, for the play trial and, and is going to take another shot, uh, uh, in the, the queen's plate, you got to respect him a little bit. Absolutely. And, and his third lifetime race first on that track and surface, uh, uh, there's every reason to believe cause and mayhem could improve this time around, but, uh, tough post, tough field, 10 furlongs cause and mayhem though. An interesting horse, another horse from that play trial map, as you said, the list is long. Duke of Love, he's actually the third choice uh, on the morning line. He ran some good races in America, but he's also been uh, a good up in Canada without winning recently. In the play trial, though, he had a horrid trip. Yeah, and he comes from a very good barn, Brian, uh, the barn of Josie Carroll, and is uh, one of the my race horse, uh, uh, micro ownership horses. Yeah, and that's uh, one of the reasons he might be the third choice. But uh, yeah. don't just draw a line through that last race because of his fourth place finish, as he really uh, had no chance in the stretch. That's Duke of Love. I, I mentioned Ironstone, a consistent horse who shows a lot of speed, also could uh, be very much involved early in this race. And then you have a, fur, uh, a few long shots, but a lot of interesting horses. I don't know how hard it is to look past the two favorites. The Phillies should be favorite, Rondeur. Flavian Pratt is actually making the trip up to, to ride Rondeur, uh, which probably won't hurt at all. But uh, all in all, an interesting Queen's play. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, uh, you know, you if you're trying to beat the favorites uh, in Moira and Rondeur, uh, I, I, which, you know, I was hoping to try and do, you take a look at the rest of this field and, and it's really hard to separate them. It's really hard to eliminate them. I I won't be surprised if almost any of them pull an upset uh, in, in, if they run back to their best race and a lot of them have a a best race that's uh, makes them a contender. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I might be leaning towards, um, Hall of Dreams, the one, uh, as the horse to throw into my exotics. And I think this is a really nice exacto or trifecta race if you can hit it. Uh, big field. And, uh, and and yeah, there's out of the 11, there's certainly seven or eight that you can at least uh, consider pretty well in here in the Queen's Plate. Uh, besides the two favorites, Moira and, uh, and fans of Schitt's Creek know where that name came from, Matt. But she might be a Philly, a special Philly who can compete in the best races in America. And I, and I have high hopes for Ron Dewar. So we're looking forward to Sunday's Queen's Plate at Woodbine. All right, Matt, we looked at the Alabama field. We looked at the Queen's Plate field. It's uh, it, it's our favorite time of the show. Is it our favorite time of the show? I, I think it is <laughs> when we give out our top picks. I'm looking at these races for exotics because um, I think what you're about to see is a little bit chalky. In the top picks, it's more chalky than I prefer, but uh, I do have some horses to play underneath, and that's what I'm going to be doing in the Alabama and the Queens plate. But without further ado, sir, you start us off. People want to know who you like in the Alabama to start with. Sure, Brian. Well, I'm looking forward to the 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 uh, Secret Oath Nest uh, 
revival. Uh, but I tell you, Brian, even though there's so many things about the two of them, their records are so close. They've won almost the exact same amount of money in their careers. They both have grade one wins. They've both beaten each other. And when they didn't, they finished second. But it seems like all the, I don't know if they're intangibles, but there are, are factors that, you know, uh, uh, seem to make Ness the horse you have to pick, not just that big victory uh, in the in the coaching club American Oaks recently, but the move to the mile and a quarter, I think is a big advantage for nest for me. I like nest on top and I like Jerry Mander as my horse to finish second. Yeah, that's exactly where I am now. Um, yeah. 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 I don't know how intangible they are either. They seem relatively tangible because this Philly is a monster at a distance. I, I Kind of said it I, all along, like long before the Belmont, that this Philly wants a distance. And of course, she proved it in the Belmont. She proved she likes Saratoga. Uh, I'm hopeful that Secret Oath bounces back with a better performance. That wasn't Secret Oath's best race in the Coaching Club American Oaks. I think that goes without saying. However, at her best, I don't think she beats Nest in that Coaching Club American Oaks. And this only seems to set up better for Nest, just like you said, the mile and a quarter distance of the Alabama. She's showing more tactical speed in these smaller fields, the Kentucky Oaks. Perhaps, you know, she just caught, got caught up in the traffic a little bit and didn't, didn't love that. And uh, certainly Secret Oath got the jump on her, but she's showing more tactical speed. I rat Ortiz, Saratoga's leading jockey. I find it impossible to look away from anybody but Nast. I, I think she's one of the best horses in America, and, and that includes males and that includes older males and i think we're going to see another good performance from nest and, and she's going to win the alabama on saturday i think jerry manders the most likely horse to run second i want to try that scratch cat a little bit in the exotics though underneath how about we go queen's plate matt and i see you're making it a all three-year-old philly top pick week um, for you yeah i'm going phillies like i said before you know as i search through the uh, through this field of 11, trying to find a uh, price. And then, uh, and then that huge performance by, Mo by Moira uh, uh, prepping for what turned out to be a prep for this Queens plate. Um, I'm going to go with the Philly. You're going with the Philly. I'm going with the Colt. I think uh, uh, Oxbow's grandson of uh, awesome again. I, I think that says 10 furlongs to me. He is just sharp as a tack this year. I think he is another horse that could come down to America and compete well against graded stakes competition. For me, 10 furlongs is the difference. I think Ron Durer is going to outdo the Philly. I have big respect for the Philly. I mean, you could see it at two. She is a very good Philly. But uh, as the favorite, I want to beat her. Ron Durer not offering a lot of prices. But like I said, there's a lot of prices to use underneath. I'm on Ron Durer, Flavian Pratt, the son of Oxbow in the Queen's Plate. All right, Matt, that's our that's our horse center. We already talked about how big our next week's show is going to be with the Travers, an excellent looking Travers edition this year. But before we go today, I need to get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting week heading up to the Travers. And as always, I want to thank you folks for uh, watching the show or maybe even listening to the Horse Center podcast in the car. Yeah, thank you for listening to the podcast. Matt and I both, especially me, look better in podcast form than we do here in video. That's, that's for sure. I want to also thank our sponsor, The Best Contest site out there matt that's derby wars thanks to candace curtis for the race graphics our friend candace curtis in the home office there in louisville and of course thanks to you folks if you haven't yet subscribed to the youtube channel here on horse racing nation what are you waiting for go ahead and hit that little red button now for us we'll be back with a big show next week it's traverse week next week but for now enjoy the alabama and the queen's plate and good luck we'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.